Luke chapter 2, verse number 6 through verse number 14. And when you have it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, and so it was, that while they were there, the days uh, were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Can we read verse number 7, everybody, one more time? The Bible says, let me read it one more time, verse number 7, and we shall continue. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The Bible says the next line, notice everybody, verse number 8, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. Somebody say, abiding in the field. Abiding. Come on, say it again, shepherds abiding in the field. The Bible says they were keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone around, round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Uh, for there are uh, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a, uh, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising and saying, everybody. And on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Somebody shout amen. amen. Come on, somebody shout um, amen. amen. I'm discussing from the subject out of the systems to redeem the system. Let me say it again. Out of the systems to redeem the system. Can I say it again? Out of the systems to redeem the system. Somebody shout amen. Great and awesome God, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We celebrate your name, your goodness, your majesty, your power, your very presence even in this house. So without your presence, where can we be? God, thank you for the preeminent presence of the living God, which is abiding even in the very house, wherein we, your people, are gathered together under one voice, one sound, one God, one Father, and one baptism, and one God of all creation with one reason to worship you and to extol and exalt your name above all names. I reveal the revelation, the rumor of this, your word, which was written uh, such a very long time ago. We, your people, are not here by accident, but we are here by divine appointment. Thank you for the privilege you have given us life again to celebrate yet another a remembrance of the birthing of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. We ascribe all the glory, the majesty, the praise, and the honor to your matchless name. Speak to us out of your word. I decree that I am simply a vessel uh, whom you are going to use to the glory of your name. So let me be a vessel of honor that your name shall be magnified in Jesus name. Somebody shout amen. amen. And you may take your seats in the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. Something I would love us to understand to reckon with to come to uh, a revelation about, especially to perceive and assimilate in our spirit man, is what God has been preparing uh, since the beginning of the world. Actually, if I may go back to correct myself, since even before the foundations of the world. The world was founded uh, a long time ago, but God had been in existence for such a very long time. Philosophers, psychologists, scientists, uh, physicists, you know, uh, uh, chemists of all, try to look into the uh, existence of God, the beginning of God, that how did he come into existence? How did time begin? How did seasons start out? How did days begin out? Uh, but they've not been able to come to a conclusion about uh, the searchings of their research. Wherefore, let me introduce to you again that God has been in existence for eternity, that he is eternal. The Bible says that uh, he sits on the circle of the earth. 
Hallelujah. And Isaiah 66, verse number one, the Bible says that heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. If heaven is his throne, that means he's been sitting there for such a very long time. You know, literally watching over the galaxies and the stars, the moon, you know, all the planets and everything in existence. Everything there is is there simply because God put it into existence. The book of John chapter 1 verse number 1 reminds us that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. What does that mean? That in the beginning he was there. This is why Jesus again comes and introduces to us and says that before Abraham was I am before time was I am I was uh, that which was in the beginning the Bible says him uh, says about him that he is the alpha and the omega revelation chapter 1 verse number 8 the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end the first and the last what does that mean hallelujah when you go to verse number uh, um, uh, the same verse actually he says that uh, the same which was in the beginning uh, no, no, no. Let's go to Revelation 1, 8 through 11. And then it goes on to say that the Almighty, that which was, which is, and which is to come. That means it changes not. Before times where God has been, before seasons where God has always been there in existence. Uh, the beginnings of time were when God created or recreated the face of the earth. Remember the earth had been in existence for such a very long time. And the inner inhabitants thereof which were the angels that used to walk to and fro the face of the earth defiled the universe and turned it into a den whereby God had to destroy all the world and turn it into a frozen piece of ice that what we see in the book of Genesis chapter 1 uh, verse number 1 when God is creating this was actually a recreation the word when he says let there be light was not creating was simply an allowing Tom, let there be. If I say to you, please uh, let there be money in your wallet, that means the money was somewhere else, but now I'm allowing it to be in your purse or in your wallet. That means at one time the sun had been in existence, but because God was angry with the uh, inhabitants of the face of the earth, he chose to freeze the earth, and the Bible says it refused to shine. If you read the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, you'll understand the history of what. Of what I am talking about. The reason I am saying this is to help you and I understand that we have an eternal God. He is eternal. He has been there for years, for billions of years, for centuries, for trillions of years. Hallelujah. That even angels whom you cannot count and number in ages know that God is eternal. Yet, the Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away. Yet my word, that means I I'm the word. My word shall abide forever or shall never pass away. God is eternal and he abides forever. I always said that he came into existence, that he is God all by himself. Before you and I were born, before the angels were created, God was already there. No committee, no parliament, no senate, no congress sat down and said, you know what? We are going to elect you into the throne of you being God. He is God all by himself. Wherefore, nobody can sit down and say, now you know what God, you're no longer fit to be ruling as God, so we are going to impeach you. Nobody can impeach God out of his sovereignty. He is God all by himself. Somebody shout hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, now because God has uh, devised an eternal plan of salvation, because the plan of God was thwarted by one angel called Lucifer when he fell and swept a third of the angels of God, convincing them to rebel with him. And they all rebelled and there was a rebellion in heaven. And the Bible says Michael and his angels fought. And then the dragon and his angels fought. But the Bible says until there was no more place found for them in the heavens above and they were cast down upon the earth 
and the Bible says war unto you all in the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea because the devil has come down unto you having a great wrath knowing that he has but a very short time but knowing that he has but a very short time also God devises the plan to redeem the world to serve you and I uh, to bring us back unto the love of God Almighty that we were washed in him oh by the way when you look at the human body a man is a spirit he has a soul he lives in a body so this body that was fashioned out of the dust of the ground is not you that was simply the mold or the uh, the, uh, the, the frame that God fashioned to put you into so God when he breathed the breath of life into the body then man became a living soul hallelujah so the real me is the real breath of God that he breathed into the body to become alive somebody shout amen, amen. somebody shout amen, amen. wherefore God now is devising to redeem the world because uh, sin has come into the world death has come into the world sickness diseases have come into the universe that which was at one time a perfect universe but look at how one angel can uh, mess up the whole plan of God and ruin the plan of God and God by the way uh, when we see Jesus coming it was not God that just he just thought about let me bring Jesus this was already in the predetermined plan and the castle of the living God Revelation 13 verse number 8 the Bible says that uh, the people who shall be living on the earth shall worship the beast and the false prophet all whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life slain before the foundations of the world that Jesus was slain before the foundations of the world that means Jesus was born before you and I were born Jesus was born before Elijah Elisha Samuel uh, Samson uh, all the prophets Gideon and all the judges were born Jesus was already in existence before time was was, and now he's simply coming to fulfill that which was written about him. This is why the Bible says, Psalm chapter 40, verse number 7, that Lord, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. Something was written about him. The prophets have been prophesying about the coming of Jesus. Isaiah 9 6, he says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, hallelujah. And behold, his name shall be wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace amen of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end what is it talking about unto us a child is born prophets have been proclaiming the coming of Jesus for such a long time Isaiah prophesied about it hallelujah uh, uh, Moses prophesied about it amen many prophets prophesied about it and now John 1 14 and the word become flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory at one time the word which was eternal has got to become flesh. Every prophetic word has got to become flesh. Every word God spoke about you at one time it has got to become flesh. Somebody said let the word become flesh. Somebody shout, let the word become flesh. God has a word over your life that you shall not die, but you shall live to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. That word shall become flesh. God has a word over you that you're not going to die single, but at one time, yes, you shall find a Boaz, a mighty man of faith in the valor of God, who shall walk you down the aisle, and that word shall become flesh at one time. Hallelujah. Yeah, in as much as you may be poor, so broke, so busted, and so disgusted, yet God has a word over you that at one time you shall be rich, hallelujah, that you shall not die ostracized out of the system, but you shall be a, a rich man, and at one time that word shall become flesh. Somebody said, let the word become flesh. Every word God has over your life, I challenge to you today that that word will become flesh at one time. Every Every word, every, prof every, every promise of the living God, every prophetic word he has over your life, at one time it will become flesh. I prophesy before the end of this year that the promises of God he has over your life shall become flesh. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Who am I talking to in this place? Yeah. A time came and the word had to become flesh. When the word becomes flesh, guess what? It dwelt among us. That means we'll be a held. It's his glory. When the prophetic word becomes flesh, you shall behold the manifestation of the prophetic word. That which they said it shall be impossible. When the time has come, hallelujah, that word shall come to pass. It will become flesh. That's why the Bible says, Galatians 4 verse number 4, that in the fullness of time that God sent forth his son Jesus Christ, made of the woman, made of the woman, when the fullness of time was come, the fullness of time is coming when that word over your life shall become flesh. Somebody shout hallelujah. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman. When the fullness of time, for you to become the next uh, number five on the Forbes magazine, hallelujah, of the richest people in America, in North America, your love of the world, yes, it shall come to pass. Somebody shout, it will come to pass. Somebody shouted, we all come to pass. The devil is a liar. He's been trying to uh, cause you to be anxious over the word of God. The Bible says the word of God has to be tried. The word has to be tried through the fire. Hallelujah. But as the word is getting tried, you're becoming stronger. You're becoming more powerful. That by the time the word becomes flesh, that means I cannot be moved. I am planted in God. I am founded in the in the bosom of the Father. Nothing can root me out of my destiny. No sorcerer, no witch, no hex, no warlock can drive me out of my destiny because I am planted in God. Somebody shout, I am planted. Somebody shout, I am planted. I came to preach this word. I said I come to preach the word of the living God. Can I preach the word? Somebody shout, hallelujah. Somebody shout, hallelujah. That word has got to come to pass in your life. Whether the devil likes it or he don't like it, that word has got to pass over your life. Whether the witch wills it or not. I don't care who bewitched you, how they bewitched you, when they bewitched you, how they did it, who cares? Hallelujah. That when God redeems you, God has redeemed you. When God opens up a door, can't nobody shut the door. There were doors God is opening for you. Doors to the nations, doors to kingdoms, Mukama Kusimba Mukisa, doors to generations of greatness and increase and, and power and anointing. And nobody can shut the door that God opens in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Lord have mercy when God opens up a door I don't care if they bring Majimoto he cannot pull you down when God opens up a door I don't care if Herod wants to kill you Herod cannot kill you because you are not born of flesh nor of, nor of blood but of the will of God the Father Herod cannot kill you he may stage assassins in Africa assassins in the shrines assassins on your job but when you have a word of God over your life the one shall keep you. The one shall protect you. The one shall open doors for you. The one shall propel you into your destiny. Somebody shout, I got the word. Ah, who am I preaching to in this place? Somebody shout, I got the word. Tell somebody that word shall come to pass. I said, tell somebody here that word will come to pass over your life. The devil is a liar. He's been trying to cause you to think it's taking such a long time. But God has his own time. God has the time for you. For that word to come to pass over your life. That word will come to pass in Jesus name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's amazing that now God sends forth his son Jesus Christ to come to be born into the world. And the Bible says as the son of God is coming, there was no room for Jesus in the inn. 
Lord of mercy. The Son of God has come from eternity, from the glory of the living God. He was God. He was equal with God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that he stripped himself of the garments and make him be God. And he came down and humbled himself as a human being. God could dwell among men that he may redeem the men who were on the face of the earth and reconcile them back unto God the Father. But as God was coming, the world was not ready to receive him. There was no room for God. John chapter 1 verse number 11, the Bible says, He came unto his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God. Some of us were not, were not in the plans of the systems. But because we simply chose to believe the prophetic word, somebody shout, I am a believer. Uh, simply because we chose to receive and to believe on the prophetic word, yeah, this is how God has to fashion preachers like, like Pastor Simon, preachers like, like me, singers like Tammy and, uh, and the whole choir, hallelujah. This is why we were not in the plans of man. Ah, yeah, yeah, but simply because we believed on the name of the living God. Luke chapter 1 verse number 45, the Bible says, blessed is she that believed for there shall be a performance of the things that were told her from the living God. I'm going to say it again. Blessed is she who believed for there shall be a performance a doing my God there shall be a performance of those things that were told you from the mouth of God if God says a word unto you my job is to believe it hallelujah and I choose to believe the word of the living God that sickness has no power over my life I choose to believe the word of God that I shall live to see the goodness of God in the land of the living I choose to believe the word of God that I shall not die permanently Surely, hallelujah. The Bible says, uh, as the world is coming into manifestation here, we see in scripture that Jesus has to be born outside of the system because the system rejected the Lord of glory. The system was full of everybody else. People came from miles away and thousands of miles and even from within town. But by the time God is coming, there was no room for God in the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Tell somebody there was no room for God in the inn. Tell somebody else, neighbor, there was no room for God in the inn. Let me break it down for you. The inn here is simply a metaphor to signify the systems of the world. To signify educational systems, political systems, social systems, governmental systems. America is an inn and America has no room for God. We've driven God out of our high schools and elementary schools and yet when the presidents are getting sworn in, they put their right hand on the Bible and say, by this this word I shall abide and I, and I swear to execute the office of the president of the US hallelujah but they are swearing by the word but they took the God of the word out of the system I have a message for the Senate today and for the Congress and for the White House. If you choose to swear by the name of the living God and by his word, then never drive the word of God from his system. America is the inn that belongs unto God Almighty. It does not belong to the Senate or to the Congress or to the President. America belongs to Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can I preach this word? I say, can I preach this word? And America is simply an inn. And we've allowed pornography to be in the inn. But God is out of the inn. We've allowed Hollywood to be in the inn. But God is out of the inn. Lord have mercy. We've allowed the systems of the world to be in the inn. But God is out of the inn. I have a word for this nation. If you bring God back in the inn, God shall revive the nation. God shall revive revive America. God will revive the men and the women. Bring back God in the inn where he belongs. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Revelation chapter 3 verse number 20. The Bible says, I come. Behold, I come knocking at the door. If any man hear my voice, he shall do what? And open to me. I shall come and sit with him and he shall sup with me and he with me. Hallelujah. Oh, and I with him. 
Hallelujah. But now God has been knocking. Can I please come into the inn of your home? Your home is an inn as well. Your finances are also an inn. Is God in your finances? Your marriage is an inn. Is God in your marriage? Your kids are an inn as well. Is God in your kids' lives? Hallelujah. The church is an inn. People have driven God from the platform, from the inn where he belongs in, and brought in politics and brought in their own agendas when God is supposed to be in the inn. The holy altar is supposed to be an altar of God Almighty and only the high priest is supposed to stand on the holy altar of the living God. Not some decadence filled people to come and defile the altar of the living God. Hallelujah. If we can bring God back in the inn. Look at how they drove God out of the inn and they brought in everybody else. Lord have mercy. And because there was no room for Jesus in the inn, God was born outside of the inn. And it's amazing how it is okay by the way to talk about sex and talk about other things on national television but it is not okay to talk about the name of Jesus. It is not okay to, talk, to, to even mention the name Jesus on NBC or, or ABC or, or, or each channel or mention them all. Hallelujah. Or even in, in high schools, that when your daughters who are born unto you a child of God go in your schools, elementary and middle school and high school, and they mention the name of Jesus, that is going to be an expulsion because the system has driven God out of the inn. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said, uh, you're not ready for a preacher today. I notice you're not ready for a preacher. Can I, can I preach this word? I said, can I preach this word? Ladies and gentlemen, now God has been driven out of the system. And by the way, he has come to his own people. The people who have been praying for salvation, praying for a healing, praying for restoration. But when he came to them, look at how they filled the systems with everybody else but room for God. Now God has to be born in a manger. What is a manger? A manger is a long box or a long trough where they used to, pro to put food for horses and cattle for them to feed on. So God was born in a place where cattle and horses feed. And this is why the baby was put in a manger. Hallelujah. Jesus has been put in a manger. Hallelujah. And I like this word. The Bible says in Luke chapter uh, 1, verse number, Luke chapter 2, the scripture that you and I read. It was Luke chapter 2, verse number 8. Thank you, Jesus. Verse number 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. But notice, the writer is very diligent. He writes verse number 7 saying, There was no room for God in the inn. And because there was no room for, for God in the inn, look where God goes. God goes to the fields to find shepherds in the countryside. Let me say it again. Look. The beloved physician, who was not an apostle that worked with Jesus. He was simply an apostle, a disciple of the disciples. He received witness from them which have been eyewitnesses of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke writes the gospel according to St. Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. Two major books or two major gospels and epistles. Hallelujah. Uh, and brings them to the people called Theophilus. Theophilus meaning lovers of God. Theo is a, is a prefix for God. And uh, Philus means love. So when he says uh, Theophilus was talking about lovers of God. That when you understand Luke chapter 1 verse number 1 through 4 and you also understand the acts of the apostles verse number 1 and 2 you notice that the people he was writing to were called Theophilus 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 simply means lovers of God so when he writes to lovers of God 
Look being a beloved physician. He was a medical doctor by profession. Some of you are lawyers. Some of you are engineers. Some of you are mention your career. Some of you are nurses. Some of you are in the, in the political system. Hallelujah. But in whatever agenda or arena you may serve, never forget the Lord your God. Luke was a physician, but he went on ministry trips. That's how we wrote the entire book of the Acts of the Apostles. He also received high, excellent training in ministry. He received training that by the time he compares his gospel to Matthew, to Mark and John, and Luke becomes out more excellent than they all. That means he was thoroughly trained in the word of God. Hallelujah. Let me break it down for you. So now he is writing in Luke chapter 2, verse number 7 and verse number 8, that there was no room for Jesus uh, and his parents in the inn. And the Bible says in verse number 8, now they were in the same country, shepherds in the field. Let me, let me pass for a minute. They were in the same country, shepherds in the field. The same country is talking about a country outside of Israel, outside of Jerusalem, outside of Bethlehem and Nazareth. Hallelujah. The shepherds traveled from miles away to come and witness the birthing of Jesus. But they come by divine revelation. The people that God is going to use have got to have their antennas opened and tuned in unto God. These were astrologers. They were stargazers. Hallelujah. They knew nothing about the ministry of God. They were not prophets. They were not teachers of the law. They were simply shepherds, astrologers, hallelujah, who are minding their own business. But the reason God chooses shepherds in the fields is because the shepherds in the church were not ready to receive God. So he has to go out in the fields, uh, the fields of Africa, the fields of uh, Europe, hallelujah, and bring out shepherds who are ready to do the will of God. Don't you be so when you find people that used to be prostitutes, amen, and sorcerers are on the pulpit preaching the word of God. These were the shepherds in the fields, but because of the mercies of God, Romans 9 verse number 15, the Bible says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. We are not chosen because we prayed so much, or fasted so much, or paid a tremendous price, amen. We are simply chosen because God had mercy on us and because the people the shepherds in the church drove him out hallelujah shepherds in the field have to come in the fields of the world where gangsters were where homongers were don't you be surprised that God chooses a man like Moses who was a killer and a desperado to deliver his people Israel because the other shepherds were not ready so God has to go among the gangsters and bring out his own shepherds whom we can fashion according to his purpose and will that's why the Bible says 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 26 26 27 and 28, that brethren, hallelujah, that don't you know that not many wise, not many noble according to this world are called, but God has called the foolish things of this world to confound the wisdom of the wise. Why? He chooses people like me who have an accent from nowhere. It's not even on the map of the world. And God brings you here as his own shepherd. God is looking in the fields. He's looking in the fields. And as he's looking in the fields, he's going to find you and find you and find you and find you and find all of us here. So God can bring us back into the country to proclaim and to witness the birthing of his son, Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. When Jesus was born, the Bible says the angel of God appeared down to the wise men, the shepherds who were in the field because revival had come into town. But the people he had organized for such a long time to usher in this pending move of revival were not ready. I have news for you. God is looking for people that are after their heart of the living God. Men and women who are after their heart of God. They may have issues, but they have their heart of God. 
David had issues, hallelujah. David had issues with Bathsheba. He had issues that of all the kings of Israel, he shed the most, the most innocent blood. No wonder God denied him to build the temple of the living God. But the boy was a man after God's own heart. We may be all messed up and have a lot of issues, hallelujah. But we search after the name of the living God. We may not know the word in and out, but we have a heart which is after the name of the living God. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Ask somebody, neighbor, do you have a heart after the name of God? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a situation here. The Son of God has been born in a manger. And every time the vision is born in a manger, let me break it down for you. A manger is a place of rejection where the rejects are put. Hallelujah. It is a place for animals. But how can you have God born among animals? How many of us remember the vision Peter beheld in Acts chapter number 10 where he was on the rooftop praying and behold a sheet was left let down by the four corners and then the sheet were filled with all animals and, uh, and cattle and beasts and uh, fowls of the air and mentioned it all. And Peter said, Lord, I have never eaten anything unclean. And the Lord said unto Peter, well, what I've given unto you, you've got to eat because what God has cleansed, you cannot call defiled or unclean. These were the same animals. They were called the Gentiles. God was born in the field where the Gentiles were. The, the animals are significant of the Gentiles. The people who are going to bring in revival are not the Jews, are the Gentiles. It is the Gentiles from Uganda, the Gentiles from Kenya, the Gentiles from, from Haiti, the Gentiles, hallelujah, from Cape Verde, the Gentiles from Europe and Africa who are going to bring revival all over the world, hallelujah and God has chosen you and I to be the pioneers of this wonderful prevailing move of revival and revival is coming and can't nothing the devil do about it hallelujah because the purpose of the living God has determined it and nobody shall disannul it somebody shout I am one of the ones somebody shout I am one of the ones Hallelujah, hallelujah. And because there was no room for Jesus in the inn, he's born outside of the system. Born out of the systems to redeem the system. Born out of the system to redeem the systems. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The people that God is, is going to use, the people who know nothing about the history of Jerusalem, who know nothing about the word of God, they're simply outside of the system. But God brings them out and brings them in. Hallelujah. God has a room for you. I said God has a room for you. I said God has room for you in his purpose on his mind. The system may reject you, but God still has you written on the palm of his hand. You're still on the mind of God Almighty. No wonder the Bible says, I even know the number of the hairs put on your head. Jeremiah 29 verse number 11. He says, I know the plans that I think towards you to give you a hope and a future or to give you an expected end. Hallelujah. People may not think about you. Systems may reject you. But God knows the plans he is thinking about you. He knows the ways he has prepared for you. He knows the greatness he has staged for you. And that time is coming when you shall walk in the manifestation of the fulfillment of the prophetic word. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come and preach with me. Tell three people next to your neighbor, a revival is coming. Tell somebody, revival is coming. Tell somebody else, increase is coming. Tell somebody else, your promise is coming. 
tell somebody else the prophetic word is coming to pass. Yeah, yeah, it is coming. The devil is a liar. He may delay it or tarry it or hinder it, but it shall and will come to pass. I got news for you. When God determines to bless you, can't nobody break the determination of the living God. God is determined to give you a promotion, to increase you, to give you a new anointing. When God determined to anoint David, somebody may come to take your place. Eliab, Shema, Abinadab, but your anointing belongs to you. And nobody can take your place. Nobody can take your place in your home. Nobody can take your place in your marriage. Nobody can take your place on your job. Nobody can take your place in the system. He was prepared by God. And nobody can take it away from you. Somebody shout, it is coming. Somebody shout, it is coming. Who am I preaching to? Please, because of time, allow me to conclude. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Luke chapter 2, verse number 14. And the Bible says, glory to God in the highest. And everybody. Luke 2, 14, everybody. Uh huh. The Bible says, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. When Jesus was born, the Bible says, Number one, God has to receive all the glory and all the honor to his name. Number two, there's got to be peace on the earth. Hallelujah. And Goodwill. Hallelujah. It's God's will for you to prosper. It is God's will for you to increase. It is God's will for you to have longevity in life. Longevity in everything you do. It is God's good will for you to prosper and not be diminished. It's God's will for you to have peace on earth. Peace in your country. Peace in your home. Hallelujah. How many of us want a chaotic home? A chaotic house, a chaotic home. How many of us want a, a country full of? Imagine if America had rappers in Newton Wellesley and rappers in, in Winchester, and you have to come into church hiding because there is no peace. It's God's will for us to have peace in every place we go. Peace on your job. And I decree whosoever has been trying to get you fired on your job, God says you shall have peace. They shall go in your place. They shall be fired in your place. Hallelujah. Because peace on earth, goodwill among men, so God can receive all the glory. Somebody shall glory in the highest. Somebody shall glory in the highest. We give God back all the glory, all the glory, all the honor belongs unto God, our Lord, our King and our Redeemer. And I have news for you. I got breaking news on BBC and CBC, hallelujah, and CNN and NTV, hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is born today and, he, and nobody can kill him, nobody can destroy him because he has been born. Your destiny has been born. Your vision has been born. Your increase has been born. Your promotion has been born. Hallelujah. Because it's born. Goodwill. Glory in the highest. Hallelujah. The favor of God. Peace, joy, and love in the Holy Ghost. Everybody rise up to your feet and shout glory in the highest. Come on, take a minute. Take a minute and give him all the glory. Lord, we give you the glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you for Jesus, your son, who come to redeem us, who come to die for us, who come to reconcile us back to the love of God, who come to re-register our names in the book of heaven, in the Lamb's book of life. Come on, let me hear you. I can't hear you. Lift up your voices to God. Yes, give us more volume on the keyboard, please. Hallelujah. Everybody lift your voices and give all the glory and honor unto God. When God was born, the 
the angels of God are to come down from heaven and to proclaim with the multitude of the angels of God giving glory unto God singing praises unto God honoring the name of the living God ascribing all the glory all the majesty all the honor unto the Lord our God come and give him all the glory give him all the honor give him all the praise he deserves it all. Ibalendo rabata kataya.